my short review of the Thermal Take Big Typhoon. Uh, first, I want to go over some of the specs. Um, compatibility with the heat sink. Um, it'll fit the Intel Pentium Extreme Edition, um, all the socket LGA 775s, uh, Pentium D, Pentium 4, Celeron D, as well as AMD uh, Athlon 64X2, uh, the FX series. Um, Socket 754, 939, and AM2, as well as the Semperons in that socket. Uh, dimensions of the heatsink are 122 millimeters by 122 millimeters by 103 millimeters. The material is copper base and aluminum fins. There's 142 fins on this heatsink. I'll flip this over so you can see. There's the fins down there. Alright. Uh, there is a 120 millimeter fan that comes with it. Black housing with orange blade. Uh, it is a 12 volt fan. Uh, you can lower the voltage on it, uh, but lowest you can go with 7 volts. At 7 to 12 volts is the operating range. Um, power input is 3.6 watts. Uh, fan speed is 1300 RPM, give or take a little bit. Um, max airflow on this, which is this is the original version. They do have a new uh, VX out, which actually um, is up in the 70, almost 80 CFM range. But this right here will run at 54.4 uh, CFM. Noise, which is probably the best part about this heat sink, since it's only 16 decibels, uh, you won't even really hear it. Overall, the other case fans and the modern. Uh, uh, computer case for a person who'd be putting this in there to overclock or just get better temperatures from a hot processor. Uh, you won't even be able to hear this thing. Uh, the weight is 813 grams, which surprisingly, there's six heat pipes, but compared to a heat sink like the Ultra 120 and um, Tunic Tower, which are quite a bit l uh, larger than this. This actually uh, has quite a bit of weight, and I believe that's because of this fan. Um, if you, I compared this fan to an Antec uh, LED fan in the same size and uh, rate at 79 CFM, uh, I believe it's Tricool, and it actually was a little bit less weight than this by probably a couple grams. Um, other things um, that come with it, uh, of course, are instructions for all the sockets named. Um, so I have a box like this that comes with it that's got all your parts in it. Um, I don't have all of the parts with me, but uh, here's some of the ones for the 775 socket Intel. Uh, you have your back plate, top plate, um, hardware, uh, foam insulator that you put against the motherboard. Uh, if you don't plan on taking this off, I guess ever, um, then you remove these two adhesive sides here, but since I plan on probably removing this when I sell my motherboard and get a new computer, because I'll probably still have it, or even keep the computer, sell the heat sink, either way, um, I'm just going to leave it on there, and from what I've heard on the internet, it's safe, so. And then you have what goes on top of that is the insulator, which that's, that's the foam, this is the insulator, sorry. And basically, um, this goes against your motherboard, then you put this on top of that, it will do it like this. Okay, motherboard's down here, right here, this goes on top, plate on top of that, and that's the back basically, that's how that would look. And then basically you thread these included screws through here, through the motherboard, and you put the washer here so that the metal from this riser does not touch your motherboard and short it out. And then on top of this riser, you will mount the top plate. On top of the top plate, you will mount the included thumb screws, which are quite large and have room for a looks like flathead screwdriver might be maybe could, well, I don't think a Phillips would fit on there but maybe a small flathead 
um, tighten these down. The only thing that I do not like about this heat sink that I found out so far is there's no springs on the hold downs and there's no like stopping like there's no these go threaded all the way down so for a person who has never installed a heat sink like this or who doesn't really know how much a motherboard can take uh, you could mess your motherboard up but basically just tighten it down hand tight uh, maybe a quarter turn more hand tight on the motherboard um, as far as the risers go and when you get your heat sink mounted on there just hold it down with, with the weight of it like so after you apply your thermal paste make sure to do that don't don't forget that because it doesn't matter how good a cooling you got unless it's lapped but that's another story anyway you want to hold it down like this and um, put your top plate and such on top and uh, start screwing each of them down and you want to do it kind of like you change a tire uh, like this you'd want to do this one this one this one this one basically hand tight till it's mounted down to where the heat sink won't move at all uh, and then just go quarter turns basically until it won't move won't 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 slide around at all and then um, when you're pretty confident and sure that it's mounted good uh, if you're going to have it upright in the case uh, make sure you kind of lift the motherboard up to see how the weight's going to actually affect it and see if it'll move after that and then if not you know mount it in the case and whatnot um, then uh, when you start your computer make sure you go into BIOS or if your computer loads really quick get into Windows and open up a temperature program and make sure it's mounted correctly because I know that these have um, a history of not having very flat bases I mean to the naked eye it looks pretty flat but when you hold a razor up against there's, there's high spots and low spots and um, lapping will definitely help that but if you're not into lapping and you don't have the time, uh, this heat sink should definitely cool your processor very nicely. Um, I've seen people who run these on quad cores and overclock them, and they, they run pretty cool. So I'm running mine on a 2180 uh, dual core, so I think I should be all right. And I'm going to plan on overclocking it. So this has got to be way better than the stock Intel heat sink, which I'm currently using right now. So we will see what happens um, if anybody has any questions or anything about um, buying this or anything that I didn't cover or anything you're wanting to know or anything I didn't describe very good um, just give me a comment or throw me an email uh, that's about it thank you